Below the great river, a bustling hub channels the flow of marrow trade. Schools meet and mingle on Lorwyn's riverways. In the bustling interplay, the marrow renew their sense of community as they sharpen their wits and hone their trading skills. Marrow schools rarely form by design. They come together naturally as eager learners surround the wisest teachers. Though the currents of the lanes shift every year, the marrow never lose track of where they are or where they are going. And if there is a place worth going, the marrow lanes already do. And if there's a route worth taking, yours truly already has. Sig, River Guide, is a personal favorite of mine. One of my very first commanders, you may remember I used him as the basis of my Untap Matters introductory commander deck oh so long ago. For this video, I have dropped the Untap Matters and Wizard Tribal Matters sub-themes and have upgraded the deck dramatically with an intent to win. Sig is a great commander for two reasons. First, he is seldom seen as a threat at the table. When you sit down across from Atraxa, Savala, and Narset, you you are likely going to be largely left alone to your own schemes. But Sig is highly underrated and can get out of control fast, taking games with little to no warning. Second, Sig is a very flexible commander with multiple win strategies. I personally love having a commander whose deck can win through multiple different styles and means, as it makes it more difficult for my opponents to disrupt my victory, and it keeps games interesting because each match is different. With Sig, the Three main win strategies are Combo, going infinite with Wanderwine Prophets, Merfolk Tribal, slamming lords, generating schools of fish, and overwhelming our opponents with Tribal Synergy, as well as good old-fashioned Aggro Swarm, and Voltron, equipping Sig with powerful equipment, giving himself protection, and swinging in for the kill. What's more, these strategies have synergy with one another. It all interconnects to form a tight, fun, and powerful deck. Let's take a look at the main components. No better place to start than with Sig himself. Sig is a 2-2 merfolk wizard for one white and one blue mana. Right off the bat, I love low-cost commanders, both because you can bring them into play early and, even if they've returned to the command zone multiple times, they remain affordable to bring out again and again. Sig has Island Walk, but his real ability is giving target merfolk that you control protection from the color of your choice until end of turn for only one and a white. Protection from colors is extremely powerful. This means whichever merfolk you grant protection two, which can include Sig himself, which can include multiple merfolk if you have the mana, can't be the target of spells or abilities of that color, can't be blocked by creatures of that color, can't be dealt damage by sources of that color, can't even be enchanted by that color. Protect your merfolk, make them essentially unblockable, chump block without actually dying for days. There's so much packed into this little 2-2 two -two for two. Let's start with the combo in the deck. The combo in this deck is built around Wanderwine Prophets, a 4-4 merfolk folk wizard for four and two blue mana that reads champion a merfolk, meaning when this comes into play, sacrifice it unless you remove another merfolk you control from the game. When this leaves play, that card returns to play. Whenever Wanderwine Prophets deals combat damage to a player, you may sacrifice a merfolk. If you do, take an extra turn after this one. Going infinite with Wanderwine is easy with Sig in play. Give Wanderwine protection from the color or colors an opponent controls so that you can swing in and not be blocked. All you need then is a way to generate a merfolk each turn to be sacrificed. And Stony Brook Schoolmaster is my preferred means of doing this. For two and a white, Schoolmaster Master is a 1-2 merfolk that, whenever it becomes tapped, you may put a 1-1 blue merfolk wizard creature token into play. With Sig's protection, Schoolmaster can swing in alongside Wanderwine creating a token each turn to be sacrificed to take another turn and go infinite. We can also use cards like Opposition or Freed from the Real to just tap Schoolmaster to create a token without attacking. Cards like Deep Root Waters create a merfolk every time we cast a merfolk, something that, while not 100% assured, we are likely to be able to do each of our multiple turns with Wanderwine Prophets. And if we have other merfolk in play, we can keep getting some in the school back each turn to create two merfolk tokens. But Sig makes a great win con by himself. You can bring him out turn two, place some powerful equipment on him, and then by giving himself protection, swing in unblockable. 
You of course can pick your own equipment, although I don't think things like Champion's Helm or Swiftfoot Boots are necessary given Sig's own ability. Instead, cards like Argentium Armor and a Sword of your choice make for a more devastating attack. But if you really want to get dirty, and I do, my favorite equipment to put on Sig is Grafted Exoskeleton. A four mana equipment that grants plus two plus two and gives the wearer Infect. Yes, I play dirty with Infect in decks like this. And with that Argentum Armor on along with the Exoskeleton, Sig swings in for ten Infect, unblockable if you give him protection from the right color, and destroying a permanent just for kicks. In terms of Aggro Swarm, the deck runs single copies of nearly everything that modern and legacy merfolk run. For lords, we have Master of the Pearl Trident, Lord of Atlantis, Merfolk Sovereign, and Marrow Regery. We also run True Name Nemesis because, come on, it can be given protection from an entire player. Terribly overpowered, should have never been made. That doesn't mean I'm not gonna run it. I'm here to eat fish food and kick butt, and I'm all out of fish food. Thassa, God of the Sea, may not technically be a merfolk, but her ability to make any creature unblockable until end of turn, along with scrying at the beginning of your upkeep, is worth running by itself. Never mind that she can become a 5-5 indestructible. And speaking of devotion, we run Master of Waves. While this is not a mono blue deck, we should still have a large enough devotion to blue to make this card worthwhile. Lull Mage Mentor is a 2-2 for 1 and 2 blue that lets us counter target spell by tapping seven untapped merfolk. He also puts a 1-1 merfolk into play whenever a spell or ability of yours counters a spell. Great control. Seafloor Oracle makes it so whenever a merfolk we control deals combat damage to a player, we draw a card. And Harpoon Sniper takes out most threats so long as we've built up a reasonable sized school of fish. Thata Adele is great, stealing our opponent's key artifacts and using them for ourselves. I love getting extra soul rings and other fun trinkets with her. While Rootwater Thief lets us literally go through our opponent's library and remove any card, no restriction, that we choose from the game. Bye bye, key pieces of your deck fantastically frustrating disruption here. Surge Spanner lets us pay one in a blue whenever it becomes tapped to bounce any permanent, including lands, to our opponent's hands. This too works great with cards like Freed from the Real and some of our other combo enablers and accelerators. Judge of Currents is good life gain for when we're swinging in with a large force of merfolk, gaining us one life each time a merfolk becomes tapped, while Sage of Fables ensures each other wizard enters with a plus one plus one counter. And remember, nearly every merfolk in here is a wizard as well. Sage also has the added bonus of removing a counter for two mana and drawing a card. And since there's not much in the way of ramp spells in blue or white, in addition to our acceleration artifacts, which I will cover in a moment, the deck runs Stony Brook Banner A to make merfolk and wizard spells cost one less to cast. With all of these merfolk, Door of Destinies is a must run. For four mana, as Door of Destinies enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Whenever you cast a spell of the chosen type, put a charge counter on Door of Destinies. Creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one plus one for each counter on Door of Destinies. This gets out of hand fast, especially with Deep Root Waters or any of our other token generators in play. So let's talk tutors. With combo, Voltron, and tribal synergy, tutors become especially important. The deck runs Marrow Harbinger to search for whatever merfolk we want, as well as one of my favorite cards, Vidalkin Ether Mage which has the awesome ability of wizard cycling, letting us spend three and discard to go get whatever wizard card we may want. And although it's terribly off theme and disturbing when you think about the realities of this card, Sea Hunter is just too powerful not to run. A 2-2 for two and two blue mana, you can spend three and tap Sea Hunter to search your library for any merfolk card and put it into play. Not into your hand, but into play. But I suggest not reading the flavor text or you're gonna feel bad. Now I don't run Mystical or Enlightened Tutor as our emphasis is more on creatures than enchantments, instants, or sorceries. But I do run some transmute cards, namely Teleria West, which can transmute for zero, Drift of Phantasms, which can transmute for three, and best of all, Muddle the Mixture, which can transmute for two or just counter a spell. Together, these help me get the lands, artifacts, and creatures I need. What about control? Following along the same lines with Muddle the Mixture, the deck has a light control package. 
Cryptic Command gives us so much flexibility and choices that it's a must run. And if you feel like both being on flavor and messing with your opponent's memory, the textless full art features a merfolk hand. And nothing else. Arcane Denial recently reprinted and great for card draw, although your opponent does get to draw too. You also may want to run one or more of the following. Desertion, Commandeer, and or Spelljack. These are all really expensive counters, but they give you ownership of whatever nasty plot your opponent was looking to unfold. They can turn games around, especially when a win con was about to resolve. Having it resolve for you instead can be brutal. The high mana cost is prohibitive though, and so you might want to swap some or all of these out for more counter spells that replace themselves by drawing cards, such as Dream Fracture, Sage's Dowsing, or Exclude. We run Board Wipe in the form of Supreme Verdict, Cyclonic Rift, and Larry Niven's Disc. But given our often large and complex battlefield, Teferi's protection is simply fantastic, especially in response to someone else wiping the board. The deck also runs utility cards like Marrow Commerce. Commerce is a simple enchantment for one in a blue that reads, at the end of your turn, untap all merfolk you control. Great for swinging in full force to smash face and ensuring we have blockers after passing the turn. Kindred Discovery is an enchantment that lets us draw a card every time a merfolk enters the battlefield or attacks. Make sure you're running cards like Reliquary Tower because you are going to end up with a lot of cards fast. Our mana base follows the guide I have outlined in my two-color mana base video here, with a few changes. Path of Ancestry obviously is a must since we are in tribal, and Riptide Laboratory acts as great protection for our many merfolk wizards, and also can help out with some Enter the Battlefield effects. Our biggest problem with this deck is lack of ramp, so mana rocks are vital. In addition to the regular must-haves like Talisman of Progress, Gilded Lotus, and Dark Steel Ingot, you're going to want to run any mana crypts or mana vaults that you happen to have handy, as well as cards like Sapphire and Pearl Medallion, and I like to include Ether Vial because once we get it to two or three, it lets us put our fish into play while leaving more mana open for Sig's protection. Despite flashy new merfolk commanders like Kumina and Tatoyova, Sig remains my pick for most powerful and best overall merfolk commander. Kumina is slow, building a board to draw more cards or buff with counters, but in a very linear fashion with repetitive games, and Tatoyova, while a merfolk, really is more of a druid or lands deck build. But Sig is the real deal, and you can very much use this video as a template for building a more combo-heavy version of this deck, or go straight out Tribal or Voltron if you wish. It's everything I've ever loved about Murpho. Customizable, flexible, able to do everything from aggro to control to combo and back again. Old school commander at its finest. Build the deck how you like, play what you love. Best of all, it's strong and can and does win. I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. What commander deck would you like to see a tech on next? Let me know in the comments below. And this video is brought to you by my and many other people's local game store, Card Kingdom, a brick and mortar pillar of this community, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. These are the people that keep Talarian Community College going and growing strong. So thank you.